All right, you can turn your King James Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Picking up from the last study, we're going to talk about the uh, Satan's ultimate end times deception. The devil has pulled off a real, real doozy, as they say, a really good one. And a lot of people fall for it. A whole lot of people fall for it. And I'm going to show that to you today. So we began the last study, the real reason the Jews killed Jesus, by going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. This time we're going to go back to the exact same passage, but we'll start in verse 13 and read to verse 16 for a reason. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And I've said it many times, I'll repeat it one more time for new viewers. This book does not work, it does not make sense to you until you have a believing spirit. You approach it with a believing spirit, it, the Lord will open up uh, revelation to you. Get ahead of myself. Okay, you have to have belief to have things revealed. That's the way it works in God's system. If you go and you say, well, it's not a good translation and I see errors in it. Well, it probably, you do see errors because you're rather dumb. Um, and the Holy Spirit is not revealing those errors to you. You've heard them from some imbecile like James White or D.A. Carson or John MacArthur or any of the other devils that are hirelings, ministers of Satan. Um, verse 14, but ye or for ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Okay, remember the thing of um, in Judea are in Christ Jesus. He's talking to Jews that are there in Israel. All right. Um, <clears throat> who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always for the wrath of God, or excuse me, for the wrath is come upon us to be purified. It doesn't say that. Here's the point of the study. For the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Who? Who's the them in the context? The Jews. Verse 14. They killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and they persecuted us, and they pleased not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway. For the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Let me just spoil the whole sermon here. I'm just going to give you, because I know a lot of people cannot endure sound doctrine. That's part of the prophecies of the end times. So here's the whole study. You can shut it off after you hear this. You say, this is crazy. It's not, I don't want to hear it anymore. Okay, shut it off. Go watch the Barbie movie or some other thing that you are into. All right. Here's how it works. And I cut through all the stuff. Are you sarcastic? Yes, because I want you to pay attention. And if I don't talk this way, people will just kind of zone out and you'll just be, you know, riding the bus around town or doing dishes or something with your iPhone listening to this thing. And just, you know, you get to the end of it and you think, what did he say? I don't remember. You know, it's not very entertaining or something. <laughs> I have to say this is a way to go out and grab you and say, listen, this is very important. The whole, your whole future depends on what, this, what I'm saying in this study. Not this study, but what I'm saying, the Word of God. All right. Here's the whole point. Satan's ultimate <clears throat> end times deception. What was it? To take the focus off of what the whole point of the book of Revelation is, it's for the Jews. They rejected Jesus Christ. That's why they have to have the book of Revelation is where Jesus is revealed to the Jews. And the devil took it and went like this and turned it towards the church. Now you got a bunch of dopey Christians walking around that don't understand the Bible at all. And they're going around and they're saying, we're going to have to endure to the end. We're going into the great tribulation. Oh, man. What about the Jews? Oh, well, we are the Jews now. <laughs> okay. Um, have you, so you rejected Jesus Christ there, uh, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to, to the uttermost? That's the church? Really? Well, that's kind of weird. 
I mean, can you understand plain English? No, it's talking about the Jews. You know, the, the Jews. People over there in Israel, you know. Uh, there's ones that are real, ones that are false. Wheat and the tares that are mixed together and they're not to be taken apart and separated until the harvest time. Second coming. Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations. Separating the sheep and the goats. You understand? This sounds like it's going to take a lot of time to study this. Yeah, that's called Bible doctrine. Okay. So we see there, verse 16, the wrath has come upon them. Context of verse 14, Jews. Wrath come upon them them, the Jews. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 6 through 10. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day put, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Again, if you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 down through here, you'll see the difference between us and them them being the lost world, us being saved Christians. Very clear. <clears throat> um, verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, over here, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, For the wrath has come upon them, them, to the uttermost. Over here, you have... For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Here you have they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. They, you see, the wrath has come upon them. They, them, down here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. It's simple. What's Matthew chapter 24? What about Matthew chapter 24? What about this verse here? And it says immediately after the tribulation. And it, what about uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? And what about 1 Corinthians chapter 15? And what about Revelation chapter 6? And what about... Stop. Stop. Right here is all you need to understand who goes into the end times, what the book of Revelation is all about. The wrath has come upon them. God hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. But the devil comes along and he says, no, no, you have to prove how holy you are. You're going to get your opportunity. You're just going to go into the book of Revelation. You're going to see all these things, you know, and, um, and you might take the, you have to make sure you don't take the mark of the beast and everything. Because it's coming upon the church somehow. You read plain English. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 10, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Verse 11, Wherefore, comfort one another, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. The, the book of Revelation is not for, for us. Excuse me. It's not for us. I've been preaching this for years and years and years. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 30, back to the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, beginning in verse 7. Read your Bible. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But, that, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Hmm. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And they are going to serve their king there? The Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them? Hmm. Recall there was a man called Jesus that uh, was called the son of David. Hmm. Interesting. 
Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 through 24 says, um, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, pretty clear who it is, and, pre and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, supplications, the commandment came forth, and I come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Who is thy people? My people Israel, verse 20, tie the two together. And upon thy holy city, what's the holy city? Jerusalem. To finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. They're going to serve the Lord and he's going to raise up uh, David as a king, a king, you know, basically after the line of David there. Is what it's talking about. To anoint the most holy. That's a prophecy given for the future. It's the new covenant at the end of the whole thing. But it's the whole point is there. It's going to be a millennial kingdom. A thousand year kingdom. With Jesus Christ ruling and reigning as their Messiah. That's what the Bible teaches. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Jews require a sign. Are there signs in the book of Revelation? A few. Revelation chapter 1. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Okay. Um, does the church need to have Jesus Christ revealed to them? No. You already have Jesus Christ. If you're saved, if you're genuinely born again, then you have Jesus Christ. I don't need to have Jesus revealed to me. What a bunch of weird things. But who is it that requires a sign? That would be the nation of Israel. The Jews require a sign. Hmm. Show you another one. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they ha shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth, up, or ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The holy city. Thy people, Israel. It all ties in. And who are the two witnesses? Moses and Elijah. Very plainly. I've preached on that many different times. I've study on it, the two witnesses being Moses and Elijah. It's proven. I did a sermon many years ago, an audio sermon, <clears throat> um, way back before I was even on YouTube, I think, if I remember correctly, and it was called The Coming Exodus. And I get into the thing of the what they're doing there, uh, turning waters to blood, smite the earth with all plagues. Um, and 
if you actually study what Moses and Elijah did, those things are repeated in the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Moses is representing the law. Elijah represents the prophets. They come back as the two witnesses. That's why Jesus, when he's up on the Mount of Transfiguration, the two that show up, it's Moses and Elijah. Not you know, Enoch and Elijah or something like this. And it's not, well, the, the two witnesses are the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, and their bodies are slain in the, in the, you know, in the great city. Their dead bodies shall be lie in the city of, street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So the Old and the New Testament's lying there in the streets and then it comes back to life. <laughs> no, it's Moses and Elijah. All right. Why does the church need to see that? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And you can just, let's just, let's argue. Let's argue and let's fight and let's keep going on about this and on and on and on and on. And I've preached about this stuff for years and I just think to myself, you know what? If you haven't woken up yet, I'm sorry. There's not much time for you left. I, I just don't have time for people like that. But Matthew chapter 24. Go, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And I have 13 proofs that Matthew chapter 24 is for Israel, all right? A testament is a force after men are dead. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 through 17. The death of the testator is what brought in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 24 is before the crucifixion. Therefore, Jesus is speaking to Jews in the Old Testament time period. All right? <clears throat> so, here I have the entire list right here. 13 different things, proofs that show that this all of Matthew chapter 24 is being written to Jews that are going to go into this time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel's 70th week. Verse number one, you see the term buildings of the temple. All right. Uh, what buildings of the temple do we have as Christians? We don't have a holy temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Verse number three, you have the Mount of Olives. Uh, I don't think the Mount of Olives is here in America. Okay. It's talking to Jews over there in the land of Israel. Number nine, you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. See the next sermon for the more on that one. But um, that's going to be for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Number 13, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You know, compare that to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, number, or verse 14, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached, not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Two different gospels there. We're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom right now. We are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number 15, or verse 15, excuse me. The Bible talks about stand in the holy place. The abomination of desolation, when you see him, stand in the holy place. All right. Um, what is the holy place for a Christian? See, it's talking about Jews in this time. You go to Matthew chapter 24 and say, well, see, it's the church. It's the church. It's not the church. It's Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 16, them which be, be in Judea. It plainly says it right there in verse 16. Look at it. Okay? Verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. How can you get this as the body of Christ? It's talking about Jews in the land of Israel. Compared to Ezekiel chapter 36, when they're brought back to their land. Talking about that in the next study. It boggles my mind how people just don't get this. Verse 20, neither on the Sabbath day. Christians don't keep the Sabbath day. Read Romans chapter 13, verse 9. There's not one mention about keeping the Sabbath day. They worshiped different times on the first day of the week, which would be Sunday. And the whole thing is in the New Testament, you can worship on any day of the week. There isn't a prescribed day that you have to worship. All right, verse 24, show great signs and wonders. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, which we just read not long ago. The Jews require a sign. There's great signs and wonders. Why does the church have to see that stuff? We don't. We live by faith. We're saved by grace through faith. <clears throat> verse 28, eagles be gathered together. Okay? Talking about a prophecy. Whether the, the, the eagles are be gathered together, you know, that's talking about the battle of Armageddon. Revelation chapter 19. But the problem is, you say, well, it could be for Christians. No, because Christians are following, following Jesus Christ down from heaven. The bride of Christ is in heaven, and we come down to the earth in Revelation 19. Early part of the book of Revelation 19, you see the church, the bride. And she prepares herself to be married 
the marriage has come, we go down to the earth and the Lord stomps the Antichrist and his army. And then we go and we have the marriage supper of the Lamb in Israel. Separate the, the sheep and the goats. Judgment of the nations. Study after study after study proving this. But you've seen one video on YouTube and you know better than me. Can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you. You believe that you're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble or whatever, or the great tribulation? You've fallen for Satan's deception. That's all I can say. All right, <clears throat> verse 30. The sign of the Son of Man in heaven. We're not looking for the Son of Man. We don't care about his genealogy. Oh, well, wait. You know, did Jesus was did he have some deadlinger blood in him or something? Or what are, No. Um, I don't care about his genealogy. I mean, I care because it's in Scripture, but I'm saying it doesn't relate to me. I'm a Gentile. I'm a barbarian. And I'm born again. Born again barbarian. Okay. <laughs> verse 31. His elect from the four winds. Compare that to Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, when do you have 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes? Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Then why is there separation in Revelation 7? 144,000 sealed Jews and a great multitude from every nation. See? Because things change. And what is, it, what is the event that changes things? It's called the catching up of the body of Christ. The body of Christ goes up. Time of Jacob's trouble, trouble gets started and things change. Verse 32, the fig tree is Israel, if you read Hosea chapter 9, verse 10. Okay? So, um, that's going to be it for that study. Uh, just a quick one here, but uh, very much ties into this whole thing. And, and, you know, and I could just go off on this thing for hours. But uh, I already have <laughs> over many the course of many years proving that the book of Revelation is written specifically targeting the Jewish people. And Matthew chapter 24 is also targeting the Jewish people, them which be in Judea, you know, uh, not Christians in uh, America someplace or something, or over in Germany or Sweden or Finland or the UK or whatever. It's talking about Jews in Judea that have to keep the Sabbath day. All right, keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, verse 12. Can't take the mark of the beast. All right. So, um, if you've fallen for the deception um, and you're here and you're just going to cause trouble or whatever else, well, just probably going to delete your comments, quite frankly. If you don't agree, then go someplace else. Don't waste your time here. You will never convince me. Um, I have gone through the arguments so many times, um, answered them all, and re-answered them and re-answered them. And, um, the end times, the book of Revelation, it's about the nation of Israel. Jesus is being revealed to them. He brings Moses and Elijah back to preach about him, to show great signs and wonders. It's all there. The culmination of all things. So that is going to be it. And uh, one other study to do here. Should Christians help send Jews back to Israel? Should be a good study. And we will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.